in the poor streets of Ajegunle, Lagos. The story of an elderly man gives hope to a lot of us. He was a thriving musician who had a lot going for him. He had his own music band and had taught different countries in Africa with his band. He has also featured in the music videos of some of the earliest musicians in Nigeria, like Joe Boy, Tiwa Savage, Fire Boy, amongst others. I was curious to hear his story from the horse's mouth, so I went all the way to visit him beside the bush where he has been living for several years now. And this is his story. Yeah, I'm Bush Doctor. Bush Doctor. I'm a musician, so, guitarist, a singer, composer, and producer. Um, can you tell us um, about your music career, how you well, started? Well, and, um, going well my music career started very early. I remember when I was in the primary school, I used to play flute in the band. And I was at the age of 10, at the age of 13. But it taught me how to play When I grew up, then when I grew up, I started going to play suits. Then I see I can learn guitar. Then after professional as a guitarist, I started the back of a car mask. You know, that's why I came down to Lagos. Okay, Ugeli in Delta State. Ugeli in Delta State, yes. When I came to Lagos, when I came to Lagos, I made some money. So I made some money. I decided to start a band. I went back to Worry there, got some kid boys. He said, that after making some money in Lagos, he decided to travel to his village to bring some young men who were already into music to form his own music band in the city. And that was where his mistakes and downfall began. But as of now, and there are no bands to play, so I go into a fellow studio. You know, I've worked with so many artists. And this is my manager, in the fan of, I don't know what to say. I did my video with you, boy. Fireboy, Tewasavie, Fino, and his other numerous, numerous music I can name. So how did um, Fireboy get you involved in that okay. music? How did you get involved in it's the He knew the Rasta, who is white beard, you know, so I do look at Rasta in Jamaica, so it was then the guy, you know, somebody recommended me to him, and he came, yeah. and started. Yeah. Another thing that I'm interested to know is, um, how you said you were living at the Keja before you had the band yeah. and everything was going fine for you. But how did things get so how did it how did you get to this level? So the boys I brought from home, they are kind of not here. He said that as the band was growing, the boys began to get into trouble everywhere he took them to. He said that they were always getting into fights and getting involved in one mischief or the other. And he was always dealing with police cases because of them. And in the end, he had to disband the band and send all the boys away. He said he wanted to give the boys from his village a platform and a future. But he didn't know that it was a decision he would later regret in life. I asked him about his family, if he had a wife and children. And he said, that he had two children, male and female, but sadly, he lost his son to the cold hands of death several years ago. And when I asked about his daughter, he did not sound enthusiastic talking about her, and I sensed that perhaps they did not have a cordial relationship. Another thing, you, you, you made mention of um, your family. You said your family was, you, have, you rented an apartment for them in Ikorudu. So yes. you had kids? My kids, yeah. It's great. Oh, okay. You have you had two children. Yeah. So one is left. So your your only the daughter is left. Where is she now? Okay, she's outside the country with the husband. Which country is she? She's in Canada. Do do you hear from her? But do you have a good relationship with her? Because from the way you are talking, it doesn't seem like you have this robust the mother, relationship. The mother took her away, went away, and took her away too. When I pushed further, my suspicions were confirmed. He and his daughter do not actually 
have a good relationship. He said that her mother left with her when life began to get tougher for him and that she is in Canada now. But unfortunately, she does not care for him. I'm so sorry about that. So, why are you staying here? Well, things, you know, life, the life, you know, way to source of this is me and you know, what, what does that mean? Can you add that to me? There's just... something winding, yeah. you know, like up and down, you know, what you're going to, oh. what you're going to, 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 what don't push it, don't force it, let it happen naturally, you know. Uh, but we your journey about faith, you know. That's just belief. Yeah. When did you move into this place? Okay, I came here now. About, I've been to about seven to eight years now. Seven to eight years. Yes, yeah. we are going to do lives. People see me and say, no, they say they have This is one. very sad. Yeah, this is very sad. Money, but they never know what is going on. Uh, this is very sad. So this is where you stay. This is okay, where I live, man. Your clothes. Okay, these are your pots. Yeah, yes. And that's where I cook. That's my god. I use firewood. That's my cylinder over there. This firewood over here. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is where I sleep. This is. Uh... <clears throat> I don't have to tell you like I'm a rusty man. So this is where you sleep. This is where so I sleep. If when it comes now, how do you... This way, when it the... comes, then I'll come here, I'll dodge over here. I call it dodge. <laughs> I'll go inside and take this and cover my bed. See, oh. this is my bed, this is my bed, you can't see my bed. This is my corrugated roof. <laughs> my corrugated roof, this is my bed. So when you rain for this way, I run into and hide over here. <laughs> okay, when rain falls, this is okay. Okay, this is where you sleep in the night. That's that's um. This is where you sleep in the night. So people do not know that they. Okay. Now, how do you cope with the mosquito bites? Stays that its major problem now is how to get a better place to live and also release an album. And he has hope that help will come his way someday. You can see the environment is a pretty good for mosquitoes. When I come, the poor and my, I see they are flies. You know, you know, God, that made my immune cell be strong. I would have fallen sick because and I don't have money for it. God bless. I thank you for that. That is one of the things why I want to live the environment. But it's not conducive for my living at all. Very, very bad. I've never lived in this kind of place. I've been living in this world. So these are my problem. His story is a great to grasp story. A man who had a lot going for him in his life and career, but now homeless and broke. But in the midst of all his misery, he still has hope. He still believes that life will get better for him. I, I, there's something I really find interesting about your story. That um, no matter where you you found yourself now, you still believe that there's a better tomorrow. Yeah. That is it. Faith can move a mountain. Like wow. uh, Majestan. If you have faith, you can move mountains. But if you have faith, you know. So, faith. Uh, can, you, can, you, can you sing that for us? I can do it. If you have faith, you can move mountains. Brother, you have faith. When you have faith, you can move mountains. Don't worry, my brother. Don't worry, my friend. Don't you worry, my sister. Never worry, my friend. Just done it all. Just done it all. Just done it all. Just done it all. The story shows how life can move someone from the top to the very bottom in a twinkling of an eye. But then, 
Nobody is so broken that hoping no longer becomes a possibility. This is Richard Henshaw for Color It Hope. Please don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. And also subscribe to the channel to see our next videos.